Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This one with the seven game NBA slate for today on DraftKings. But before, before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at chrispinel 16 And if you're interested in the spreadsheet, I build every single night for the NBA season. It's got mo my most up to date information. Links in the description below for my Patreon. It's got my projections, my cheat sheet, my values, my core plays, my Discord chat, all that good stuff. Links on the description below for my Patreon. And before we talk about today's slate, how about last night's slate, man? That scoring was insane last night. And the funniest thing is when people on Twitter complain about the cash line being so high, it's just, it's because chalk went off. I mean, of course it's going to be a higher scoring night. I think the someone in my Discord chat uh, sent in a lineup that they made. It ended up scoring 418. He <laughs> won over $2,000, so shout out to you. But, yeah, it was a very, very high scoring night. That's the first time I've seen over 400 points on DraftKings, I think, this year, unless I missed a day. But... Yeah, it was an insanely high-scoring night. I scored 340 and just min-cash GPPs. Man, that was, you know, Brandon Ingram was chalk. He went nuts. Donovan Mitchell, he started off terrible. Then he ended up going nuts. And Michael Porter Jr., he ended up balling out. So a lot of the chalk ended up going off. And, you know, that just leads to a higher-scoring night. So very fun night last night. This will definitely be hard to top. But let's just get into today's slate. Not my most favorite slate in the world, but... It's all right, seven games. So let's talk about Luca here. He comes up top at 12,400, by far the most expensive player in the slate by almost 2K, but it's most definitely deserved. Now, he had a great game last time out where he had 25 points, 15 boards, 17 assists, pretty much your typical Luca game where he scored 70 fantasy points. But before that, he did struggle for about three games in a row, which I don't know if that's going to lead to lower ownership because I don't know, maybe you're just people played him that day and maybe they had a, have a bad taste in their mouth with Luca. But personally, I have no problems with that whatsoever yeah bad games happen every once in a while but before that I mean he's just balling out he's a triple double threat every time he's on the court and his upside is absolutely insane he's averaging 1.71 points per minute on the season with a 37 percent usage rate and if Kristaps happens to be out again I don't I haven't seen recent news on him being in or out so I assume he's going to be a game time decision he was originally slated to play the last game then he got ruled out after lock I believe so I think everyone on Fandle kind of got boned there but Either way, uh, with uh, Kristaps out, he's got a near 40% usage rate, over 1.8 points per minute. And, he, you know, he's not like where Giannis, he's like at 1.9 points per minute. He kind of barely plays. Luka, he's going to play 35-plus minutes in competitive games. And, you know, everything's just elite about Luka. And it's a great matchup here, too, versus Portland, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA, fifth worst. And they also just got absolutely crushed by Westbrook, who's kind of has a similar play style, if that makes any sense. I'm not really comparing the two, but... They both kind of just fill the entire stat sheet up, you know, if you get what I mean, like as a point guard, you know, rebounds, assists, scoring. But Luke is a much better scorer and a much better shooter, but kind of similar state play styles. But obviously Westbrook's extremely aggressive. But, you know, Luka, I think he can smash here at 12,400. Now, the problem with Luka is there is no value on this slate as of right now. Now, I always say that, I don't always say that, sometimes there's a lot of value like yesterday, but sometimes when there's no value... There's always value that opens up throughout the day. It's just what happens in NBA. If by some chance there's no value that opens up, probably won't be able to afford 12,400 player like Luka. We might have to go more mid-range today, but I mean, if value opens up, I think Luka's a pretty darn good option tonight, especially versus Portland. This game also is a 228 over under as well. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, he's questionable. I mean, is he really going to play? I don't really think so. <laughs> Even if he does play, I have no interest. Uh, Trey Young, he comes in at 10,200. And I swear earlier in the season, I never used to play this guy. Like, never. But I've actually been playing him a lot recently. And I tend to pick good games to play him in. Now, he did screw me versus Washington, which, you know, that sucked. He didn't even hit a 3 in the game where he went 0 for 7. But I played him versus Phoenix. He ended up scoring 63. It was a rough start, but he ended the game hot. He scored like 30 points in the fourth quarter. And then I played him versus Houston, and he had a 40-point triple-double with 80 points. And then I think there was another game I played him, and he performed pretty well. So I'm starting to like playing Trey Young a little bit. And, you know, if we don't get value on the slate, we might have to drop down from Luka to Trey Young if you want to do an absolute, you know, big spend-up on your roster. And the thing is, these Atlanta games just tend to be pretty high scoring considering they are a dumpster fire defensively and they also play very fast. So these, you know, it just usually leads to high scoring games, which is good for fantasy purposes. And as for Trey, he gets a pretty good matchup too here versus San Antonio, who struggles big time with guards. They're ranked 24th versus point guards. And he's at 1.4 points per minute, 35% usage rate, should play close to 40 minutes. I mean, if you look at the past four games, 39 minutes, 39 minutes. Washington game was kind of just, I'm throwing that game out. He, he struggled big time, but then he played 38 minutes versus Phoenix. So, good matchup here versus San Antonio. I believe this game is a 
29 to 30 total on it. So if a lot of points are going to be scored, I think Trey Young's a very, very good option. Let's see, he's going down a little bit. Embiid's out. Simmons is a little too expensive for me. Cal Lowry's a little too expensive, especially with everyone healthy on Toronto. It's a good matchup versus Washington, but 8,800 is just a little bit much for, for when everyone's healthy on Toronto. Uh, Sabonis, he's fine. You know, he's 8,600. He actually just got done crushing in the same mass matchup on January 15th where he played 36 minutes. Was 13 for 17 from the field. Had 13 boards, 6 assists, 29 points, 58 fantasy points. I mean, and actually three of his last four games, he's had 50-plus points. So he's been playing very, very well. And I would never talk you off Sabonis. I, do, I don't think he's a great point per dollar option on this slate, but I would never talk you off Sabonis because he's one of the safest plays night in, night out. It's pretty much just a safe bet for over 40 fantasy points each night with upside of more, and he's just very, very consistent. He's got a 24% usage rate, over 1.2 points per minute. Big pace-up spot here for Indy. They're, I believe, about 20th in pace of play while Minnesota is first, so huge pace-up spot. I do like that. He just got done crushing in this matchup. Not much has changed since then, so uh, don't toss the bonus. You could definitely look his way if you just want a good, solid 8,600 you know, mid-8K play. <laughs> Lillard, he's fine if you just want to stay in this game. It does have a 228 total. Now, the matchup is not that great, but whenever Lillard's below 9K, like in this mid-8K range, I can roll with it. When he's 9K, it's just a little bit too much for a guy like Lillard, in my opinion, but 8,500, I, I think that's fine. It's a, it's a fair price, and it's the cheapest he's been in at least in the last four games. And this game should be pretty exciting. we got a lot of big-name players. you got Luka, Lillard, CJ, Mello, Whiteside. You guys get it. There's lots of good players. And if Porzingis is in, that just even adds any more. It just, it just adds more. But lots of good names in this one. Now, the matchup, like I said, is not great versus Dallas. They are top five versus guards, but I still like the upside here. He's got a 28% usage rate, 1.27 points per minute. Going to play about 35-plus minutes in this game as long as it's competitive. I can see maybe Lillard and you know Luka going back and forth, trading blows. So he's fine. I, not a great point-per-dollar option, but he's okay. Not a lot of good point-per-dollar options on this slate anyway. Son Whiteside, if you just want to game stack that, I get it. Not I don't love it, but I do like Whiteside. He's, you know, he's at one, almost 1. 1.4 points per minute on the season. He's at 1.37, playing mid-30s minutes. He's fine. I'm not going to talk about him, but I think he's okay. Tobias Harris, he absolutely balled out in the last game, but it also resulted in a monster price hike over 1K. What was that, like 1, 1,400 price hike? A little too much, and I'm not going to pay 8,300 for Tobias Harris, but I do want to talk about him just because he did so well in the last game. He had 10 boards, 34 points, absolutely bought out. That's three straight double-doubles for Tobias Harris as well. And, you know, obviously he's just benefiting with Joel Embiid being off the court. He's got a 26% usage rate, which leads the team with him off, 1.2 points per minute. Chicago does rank 30th versus power forwards. I think he gets another double-double. Is he going to score 34 relay points again? Probably not, but if he does, I wouldn't be totally surprised. But I think we see more of like a 40-point game out of Tobias Harris. But 8,300, you're pushing it a little bit, so I'm probably going to pass. I'd rather play out Horford versus Chicago, but Tobias Harris is fine as well. Uh, let's see. I don't even – yeah. Yeah, Horford's 7,500, so just give me Horford with like an $800 discount. Uh, but uh, DeMar DeRozan, he's fine versus Atlanta. I do want exposure to this game. and. Atlanta is last defensively in pretty much all aspects. They rank 20th versus shooting guards, 30th versus small forwards, whatever you want to call them, Hunter Rosen. And they're also top five in pace of play, so we get a nice big pace up spot as well. And the Spurs have the highest implied team total on the slate at 119.25. So I think DeMar DeRozan can have another solid game. And he's been playing very, very well recently. 49 points, 44, 62, 44, 37, 40, 37, 41. He's been playing very consistent. Now, this has resulted in an 8,100 price tag, which might be a little much to pay for DeMar DeRozan, but... I totally get it if you just want to pick on Atlanta. So yeah, I think he's more than likely going to be the highest score on the Spurs. So you can certainly look his way. He's got 27% usage rate, 1.12 points per minute. Can't really say a lot of bad things about the Marta Rosen despite, besides his price tag. Uh, John Morant, 8K. You now he is an extremely fun player to watch. He's going to be very, very good. But he's only a GBP play only for me because of this price tag. I mean, the price has come up quite a bit. I mean, 6,800, 72, 74, 76. Now we're all the way up to 8K, but his upside's clearly there. We saw him get 56 points versus San Antonio recently. I think he has a 60-point game mixed in there as well. And he's going up against Cleveland's awful defense. They are the third worst def their second worst defense overall, and they rank 29th versus point guard. So the matchup doesn't get much better for John Morant. Colin Sexton, Darius Garland are not going to be able to stop Jaw here. He should be able to do whatever the heck he wants. And this game should be solid for fantasy purposes, considering Memphis plays very fast, and both teams are bottom five in defense. 
Memphis also has a very high 118.5 point team total, which is, I believe, second highest on the slate. So, got to have interest in John Morant here. 26% used to drive 1.15 points per minute. If you want to game stack this game up, you could certainly look to do so. So, John Morant, again, pretty much everyone in this game is mid price. So, you could easily game stack it if you want. It's not like every, there's not like anyone's like 11K in this game. So, I actually think John Morant's the most expensive player in this game. But, yeah, I think so. So, yeah, you could certainly look to game stack it if you want to. Uh, Pascal Siakam becomes at 7,900, and he's not a bad option. The only problem is everyone's healthy for the Raptors, but that doesn't mean Siakam can't pay off his price tag, sub 8K versus Washington. And uh, first off, he got a near 30% usage rate, which is fantastic, and he's at 1.2 points per minute, and he should get about 35 minutes in this game. And we do know Washington is buns on defense, and they're, they're the third worst overall defense, and they're like 24th versus power forwards and 20th versus center, so the matchup is pristine here. And they're also 7th in pace of play, so it is a nice pace up spot. As he, the last two games, a little bit rough coming back from injury. We only played 30 minutes each. I expect his minutes to get ramped up to about 35 here. And if they do, I think he can easily get over 40 points at 7,900 versus Washington as long as this game stays competitive. So he's an okay option. Again, there's not a lot of great plays on this slate. It's kind of just an, a bunch of meh plays, but you just kind of got to figure out your favorite meh plays. So I'm going to give you guys a little meh plays on this slate. Because there's some slates like last, like yesterday, I loved Donovan Mitchell. That was like an easy target last night. This slate, there's no one that's really standing out to me. I mean, like Brandon Ingram's price yesterday. Then you had the obvious values in Monty Morris and Michael Porter. Not a lot of guys like that on this slate. So it's going to be, it should be a fun slate. Maybe there's no obvious chalk. So that'd be nice because there's obvious chalk every single night. But I'm sure there'll be some injury news that'll open up some things for everyone's lineups. But as of right now, it's looking like things could be a little bit spread out. But let's see. Al Horford is the next guy I want to talk about. He comes in at 7,500, and I think he's a very, very good option here going up against Chicago. Won't grade out as a great point per dollar option play because his price has come up quite a bit. He was at 6Ks, then 67, 68, 67. Now he's all the way up to 7,500, but he's been playing very well. He's kind of like Tobias Harris where he's pretty much a lot to get your 35 fantasy points, maybe a little bit more. And, uh, I mean, he's been playing well, 42, 38, 33, 39. Gets an elite matchup versus Chicago. Does a little bit of everything, which makes him pretty safe. He's not just reliant on scoring. You know, eight boards, six assists, one block, two steals. Does a little bit of everything. Sprinkles in about 10 to 15 points every single game. And versus Chicago, I think he can get a double-double. He's not done that in the past four games, but I do think he can get a double-double here versus Chicago. He also shoots threes. Chicago is 30th versus centers. I think he's a pretty good option without without a – and beat on the court. He's at 1.2 points per minute, over a 20% usage rate. I think he's a very solid mid-range option on this slate. Uh, we can also look at Kevin Love if you guys want to stay in this Memphis Cleveland game. I think it could be a I wouldn't know if I wouldn't say it's sneaky, but I think it's a pretty solid just game stack. And yeah, I mean we have a new, near 230 total with two trash, trash defenses scoring out, so that just means fantasy points are gonna be getting scored here. And it's a nice pace up spot for Cleveland too, uh, versus the Grizzlies. They play very fast, they're top ten in pace of play, and if this game's competitive, he should see close to thirty five minutes. Versus Denver, competitive game, he played thirty seven minutes. Versus Detroit, competitive game, thirty eight minutes. Although I think that was that the game that went into overtime. If I remember I know one of those Detroit games went into overtime, but then he played thirty six minutes in the other game versus Detroit. So either way, he's been playing about thirty five plus minutes every single night besides that Lakers game where it kind of got out of hand at the end but he's been playing a lot of minutes and he's been playing well 49 33 43 39 I actually think he's one of the best mid-range plays on this slight great matchup versus Memphis they're bad in all aspects on defense he's at 1.16 points per on the season I think Kevin Love is a very strong play on this slate and definitely have quite a bit of interest and like I said a lot of these people a lot of these uh, players in this Cleveland Memphis game are pretty fair price so it's not that hard to fit a lot of them if you choose to do so LaMarcus Aldridge, he's been playing awful recently. 20, 24, 39 is okay, but 30, 29, 35. But had a nice stretch right there, 46, 45, 51, 33. And then I know some games before that he's playing well too, but he's not in great form right now, but that has led to a cheaper price tag at 7,100. And the Spurs have a near 120-point team total in this game. They're facing off versus Atlanta. And, you know, when you're playing bad and then you got Atlanta on the schedule, they always can fix things up. And they rank 23rd versus centers. I think Aldridge is fine here if you just want another mid-range option. Uh, staying in that Cleveland Memphis game, you could talk about you could look at Jonas Valanciunas here. He comes in at 6,900, and this guy's the ultimate GPP play. He can definitely bust and give you an 18 point game like he did versus Minnesota, or he can give you a 62 point game like he did versus Golden State in 29 minutes. That's just what he can do. He's done that multiple times this season. You know, he had a 52 point game versus Phoenix and mid 30s, 27. Then he's had a couple of 60 point games uh, before that as well. So he's actually he's 
He's a guy you want to target in GPPs. Not a cash game option, but a guy you can target in GPPs. And again, this game should be pretty good for fantasy. And Cleveland is 26 versus centers. He's really good at, on a point per minute basis. 1.28 points per minute. Definitely someone you could look at in GPPs. Never really a cash game option for me, but definitely a GPP guy. Same with Jaron Jackson. I don't really like to play him in cash games, but you could always look his way in GPPs. The guy's got upside, although he's also got a little bit of lower floor, and he does like the foul, so fouls are always a are always an issue. He actually had six fouls in his last game versus Houston, but again, he's just fine for GPP. It should be a high-scoring game. I never, I never forget the one time he just, I think he hit like nine threes in that game. It just wouldn't stop coming. He had an amazing game, but again, he's just fine for GPPs. I'm not going to go too in depth on that. And after that, it's getting a little bit low. I mean, we could talk. I mean, if you want to look at Colin Sexton versus Memphis, he's okay. I mean, Memphis is just so bad versus guards. They're bottom four, I believe, versus point guards. And he's, I mean, he's okay. He's not a guy I like to play a lot. He's pretty much just going to get you 25 to 30 points. And at 6K, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. But, he, I mean, he's okay. I'd rather play Darius Garland, who I'll talk about in a little bit. But, you know, guys like Melo, they're, they're fine. You can't really play McCray with Bradley Beal back. Uh, Dylan Brooks, he's okay, though. I like, again, staying in this game. You're seeing a common theme here. But everyone in this game is kind of, like, fairly priced. And it should be a pretty good game for fantasy. And Dylan Brooks... I liked him in that last game versus Golden State, and he, not Golden State, I'm sorry, versus Houston, where, you know, I said it was going to be a pretty fast-paced game, and, you know, Houston struggles versus shooting guards. Dylan Brooks came out, had a very, very good game, he had two quick fouls, so he had a pretty rough start, but he got hot, scored 42 fantasy points, and actually scored 44 points versus San Antonio and 33 versus Minnesota, so he has been playing pretty well recently. He got a little bit of a price hike from the last game, but it's deserved when he scored 40, 42 fantasy points. Really good matchup here versus Cleveland. You know, 27 versus shooting guards. He's got a 24% usage rate, 0.9 points per minute. Shooting volume will never be an issue. 17 shots, 11, 20, 20, 15, 19, 16. He's going to put up a lot of shots. So, And he shot 10 threes in the last game versus Houston, hit six of them. Then versus San Antonio, he hit five threes and shot 12 of them. So I do like the shooting volume. Dylan Brooks, I think he's a pretty solid play at 5,800. And after that, I only have one more guy to talk, actually, like two more guys to talk about. And I'm going to talk about Darius Garland here first. He comes in at 5,100. And I wouldn't normally talk about him, but there is like no value on this slate. So I'm hoping there's more value plays that open up, but he's okay. It's just more so wanting exposure to this game. He's actually been playing well recently, 32 points, 28, 33, 32. And shooting shooting volume will never be an issue with him. He likes to shoot three, seven, six, nine, four is a low versus Detroit. But he's going to shoot the ball like, about 15 times in this game and you know going up against Memphis one of the worst teams at defending guards they're 29th versus shooting guards he'll be fine he's only at 0.77 points per minute on the season but 5100 good matchup versus Memphis he's shaping up to be as of right now one of the better point for dollar options and then with Jeff Teague being traded back to Atlanta I believe it's Atlanta right uh Shabazz Napier his role is just a little bit more you know more solid he should get about 30 32 minutes in this game and he's been about a point per minute player on the season now, it's a rough matchup versus Indianapolis, but at 5K, it's not the worst play in the world. I remember I was playing this guy over 6K, but obviously Wiggins was out too, but he's fine at 5K. But it's again, there's just not a lot of value options I'm seeing right now, so hopefully some things open up. But before we get out of here, I do want to talk about show sponsor uh, OverlayDFS.com, a new fantasy website that is promoting a you know, a better place for more casual players. There's no shark infested waters here with guys like Chipotle and that. You don't have to worry about that. It's a pretty simple website to use. It's pretty much just a stardom, sit em kind of ordeal. You, or pick them, I should say. You pick whoever you think scores the most points, you pick that player. Like, I'm looking at today's slate right now. You got Pascal Siakam versus Bradley Beal, Jordan McRae versus Norman Powell. Personally, just my first glance at this, I think uh, LaMarcus Aldridge over Sergei Ibaka is probably one of the easiest plays on today's slate at overlay. I have LaMarcus Aldridge uh, projected for nearly 40 points, and I only have Sergei Ibaka for just barely eclipsing 30 points. I think that's one of the biggest edges on this slate today. So basically, you pick out of the list here. I'm not sure exactly how many there is, but you only have to pick 12 matchups, and then you get three alternatives. And if you're in the top 10% of the contest, you win nine extra money. So this is the $22 buy-in. If you happen to finish in the top 10, say you go like nine and three on your picks and you're in the top 10, if you enter $22, you'd get 180 bucks. And you, if you happen to go 12 and 0 on your picks, which I'm not saying it's easy, but if you happen to go 12 and 0 on your picks, you can win the jackpot of $5,860. There's no salary cap to deal with. There's not a lot of extensive thinking. You're pretty much, you can use my projections that I use every single day. It's what I use to play overlay. You can 
just say you want to look at, you know, should I play Jordan or should I pick Jordan McRae or Norman Powell? You can take my projections, whatever one I have highest, uh, higher projected. You could roll with them or you could just go with your gut feeling. Either way, it's a pretty fun site and it is fun to sweat them out. So if you want to check it out, it's at overlaydfs.com. I do not have a promo code to give you guys. Just go on there, sign up, and have fun. Again, there's no shark infested waters here. They're also running a slump buster program where if you lose 20 days in a row, they will refund every single dollar that you happen to have lost. So they're pretty much just daring you guys to lose 20 days in a row and they will refund your money. So again, this is overlaydfs.com. If you want to check it out, I would put the link in the description below, but I know uh, YouTube, some YouTubers have been getting strikes on their channels and bans for like a week for having like DFS or gambling sites listed in their descriptions. So I don't want to risk that. I don't want to come off YouTube for over a week. So again, overlaydfs.com spelled exactly how it would sound. Check it out. It's a very fun website. I play pretty much every single night. So I'm not just telling you guys to play a site that I would never play. And yes, I have one money on here and they pay out they paid me out within 24 hours. So it's a legit site. You can trust them. Good people over there. So if you want to check it out, overlaydfs.com. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, remember to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Really helps me out. Really appreciate it. And also follow me on Twitter at chrispinnell16. And I'll see you guys in the next video.